Pay me, pay me, pay me my silver now. Pay me or go to jail. Pay me my silver now. Got the road to Ruta dot com. Um, silver, silver, silver. <laughs> One step up, two steps back. Um, there was a. You can always tell when one of the big riggers come in because they won't like if you're going to sell something, you have a lot of something, you want to sell it, you would sell it slowly over time. So you don't you want to get the highest price you can get. You don't dump it all in one fell swoop. Well, somebody did that right here. You see that little red line? I don't have the volume of that dump. But interesting to note um, that the volume since J.P. Morgan uh, joined back in with the riggers, the volumes are going down. Remember, these are volumes of riggers trading back and forth with riggers. <laughs> very, very, very few people actually participate in the comics, the derivative market, the comics. Very few people. Handful. Um, but those who do are usually large enough and big enough to cause major moves if they dump everything at the exact same time completely against if someone wanted to maximize their value they would not dump a massive amount of silver contracts at the same moment this is the largest dump in let's see all week even back when we had some big moves over here this dump is well above that this is the largest dump since uh, let's see since going back here since uh right before jp morgan started <laughs> So J.P. Morgan got out of jail on September 25th. That was the end of their three-year deferred prosecution agreement. So they are probably the number one person, probably the, the entity that dumped this massive contract right here. That's all sales. It's just a big old dump. Uh, yesterday on the COMEX, it look, I mean, you get numb to these numbers. 250 million ounces of derivative silver was sold, bought and sold yesterday. 250 million ounces. That's below the average. The average is about half a billion. And you might be scratching your head saying, wait a minute, who is trading all this silver? And why? It's to rig the price. That's the only reason. That's the only reason. Welcome to America. 100% condoned and participated in by the U.S. government itself, the Federal Reserve, the Treasury. Uh, the trading mostly comes out of the New York Fed, but also there is also a trading floor in the basement of the U.S. Treasury building. Yes, there is a trading floor in the basement. I would say a rigging floor. They call it a monitoring station. <laughs> it's a rigging floor in the basement of the U.S. Treasury, as well as the New York Fed does most of the uh, trading for the Exchange Stabilization Fund, um, which has has a limited budget, but it has unlimited derivatives that it can buy and sell. That's the key. Um, yeah, unlimited. Unlimited derivatives. I've seen 2 billion ounces trade in a single day of derivative silver, of futures and options. That's what drives the price, 100%, all the time. It's completely illegal in commodity law, but hey, you're in America. Um, speaking of uh, criminals, um, the U.S. Mint is, as uh, my guy over at the uh, at the Mint, Jack 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 Serum, the head of Silver Eagle Sales, was talking to. I I got word that he was gonna. They were gonna actually increase the amount of silver that they're making. They're not increasing it to live up to their obligations. They're just increasing it because we've been screaming about it. They were gonna do nine hundred thousand coins per month. And that's what they were doing. Then we really screamed, and they changed. They they bumped that up. Now they bumped it up again. Supposedly we're going to get about twenty four million, but that's what tells me. Okay, the mint has decided between now and the end of the year they're going to do twenty four million of the two thousand twenty three coins. Does that mean the purchasing department that buys the blanks is not going to go out and find more blanks? Get off your ass. Go out there and get more blanks. They could sell. Literally, they could sell 50 million silver eagles if they allowed it to happen. Can they make 50 million eagles? Yes, they can. Of course they can. Here's my own spreadsheet of what has been going on at the Mint. In 2015, the 2015 dated coins, 
they made 47 million. So as far as we know, that is the the, the maximum amount that you the mint can make because they did it in one year. 44 million before that, 42 million. Then it dropped off. This is half of this is from JP Morgan, by the way. For those who of you who didn't know, Ted Butler's done some research into this. I knew that JP Morgan was an authorized pers- pers- participant. They could buy directly from the mint because they used to list who they were, and JP Morgan was one of them. This is when Blythe Masters was running the program and stocking up on physical silver. They took silver up out of the ETFs, they took silver out of the COMEX, they took silver from the LBMA, and they took silver from the U.S. Mint. Now, if, and Ted seems to think they melted that the silver eagles down and turned them into bars, which is completely illegal to do, by the way. That is U.S. currency coinage that you are melting down is illegal. It's illegal to destroy currency. If they did it, just another felony that the J.P. Morgan has um, done. I don't. I'm not so sure they did it. I, I think there'd be easier ways. They might as well just buy the blanks if you're going to do that. Or you know, who knows? But half of these were J.P. Morgan, and you can tell. Like 2016 is when it started to go down. That's when they supposedly were told to not. They had to stop rigging the silver market, and then it wasn't until Trump got in. Um, at the end of 2019, I think it was, that um, J.P. Morgan was busted by the Department of Justice because of what Jamie Dimon did to the repo market. Jamie Dimon was trying to de- destroy the economy so that uh, Biden would win, or uh, Clinton, Biden would win the election. That was part of the plan. And that's when Trump came down on him, I think it was in October time frame and charged J.P. Morgan on RICO charges, racketeering. Um, the law says if, he was fa- if they were found guilty of racketeering, they have to pay back three times what they stole. So they would have, they stole, you know, they didn't, well, yeah, they stole it. They shorted the price on the comics so they can get as much physical as possible, and then they lie, cheated, and stole, and got busted for rigging the, the price to get out of their short position. That's illegal. All that's illegal. And oh, by the way, the Hunt brothers only took like 110 million ounces of physical silver and then 100 million ounces of uh, comics contracts and got busted for cornering the silver market. And yet JP Morgan can get 1.2 billion, more than 10 times the amount the Hunt brothers did and not get busted, at least for that part of it. Now, all that silver, I believe, is gone, and we saw it leave and go into some kind of structured deal deal with Bank of America. Now, all this was in the OCC data, Office of the Comptroller of Currencies. That is not, that does not count COMEX contracts. That's completely side bets, (laughs) which is insane. Um, But yeah, and so clearly the Mint can produce up to 47, probably 50 million coins a year. But here's something that's really odd. So as you can tell, since then, that it's been going down. Then um, David Ryder came in at, to the Mint, and all of a sudden, the numbers doubled. Went from 14, 15 million to 30 million, and then 28 million. And then halfway through that year, they took him out, and they put this individual in um, right here, Ventress Gibson. Ventress Gibson was the head of HR for some other government uh Function and uh, in the wisdom of Joe Biden and his uh, administration, they put someone who had no experience at all, zero experience of in um, in minting, in running a mint, or even being involved with a mint, as the head, the mint director. <laughs> yes, it is insane. Um, and by the way, this is the the uh, annual report for 2022, and she just lies through her teeth in this one. Listen to this. Amid the unprecedented demand for circulating coins, the Mint continues to be a world leader in bullion coin production. Even increasing production quantities of one of our most popular coins, the American Eagle one-ounce silver dollar. What a lie. American Eagle one-ounce silver dollar. Now, this is the annual reports end in September. So she got in, This is that, and that was the 2022 so she's saying in 2022, they increased production of silver eagles. It was right there, right? 
They made, in 2021, they made 28 million silver eagles. In 2022, they made half of that. Just about half, 15.9 million. And oh, by the way, <laughs> massive derivative problem in 2021 where they lost $112 million and nobody's even talked about that. Nobody's even talked about it. So Ventures Gibson, by saying this, is lying to the American people. It's such a blatant lie, too. You didn't even have to put it in. Why would they do that? Ventures, answer the question. Why would you say that you increase production quantities of one of the most popular? It's, by the way, it's number two now. You, because of what you have done, it is no longer the most popular silver coin in the world. It's the maple leaf is selling more than the eagle because of what Ventress Gibson did. So yes, Ventress Gibson, congratulations on making more coins, but you're still breaking the law. After so many years, the U.S. Mint is still on allocation. Allocation is completely illegal. And oh, by the way, the U.S. Mint made a hell of a lot of money on their bullion program where they're supposed to make zero. It says it right here. Uh, do, 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 do. The Mint's bullion program had a particularly strong year, generating $3.7 in revenue, or $3.7 billion in revenue and $81.9 million in net earnings. That's the bullion program. Just the silver and gold eagles. That's what it is. Everything else is numismatic. That's illegal too. And I'll show you where. Here's the law um, for silver eagles and gold eagles. It's uh, 31 U.S. Code 5112. If you go down to the eagles, which is right here. Notwithstanding any other provision of the law, the secretary, the treasury secretary, shall mint and issue in quantities and qualities that the secretary determines are sufficient to meet public demand. Some people construe that and say, no, the secretary can do anything they want. As a matter of fact, that's what Jack Sermon told me. That is not true. That is not what the law says. They de the secretary has to make a determination. And what is that determination? Are we making enough coins sufficient to meet public demand? If she's going to lie, that's illegal. If she's going to make a, an honest determination, as is required by the law, you got to make enough coins to meet demand. Okay, moving on. It says right in the law what they have to sell these coins for. Sale price. The secretary shall sell the coins minted under the subsection to the public at a price equal to, not including, but equal to the market value of the bullion at the time of sale. So they buy comex bars, they then have them melted down into silver blanks, and then they sell them, okay? The market value of the bullion plus costs of minting, marketing, and distributing such coins, including labor, materials, dyes, use of machinery, promotional, and overhead expenses. That's it. There should be zero markup. As a matter of fact, when I was talking to Jack over at the Mint, he said it used to be that the lawyers were on him every day that you can't sell eagles higher than the cost of production. They used to scream that at him because he always, he said, I can get more for these. And they're like, no, Jack, you can't. He's been there 30 something years. Somewhere along the line, they thought, oh, it's okay to break the law now. So they're breaking the law in so many different ways. And by the way, those of you who think, well, I'm going to invest in numismatic uh, old coins because they can't confiscate that, silver and gold eagles are considered numismatic coins. So don't spend all that extra money on those old coins that are numismatic. It says right here in the law, for purposes of this section, all coins minted under subsection E, which is this, shall be considered to be numismatic items. So there you go. Another another precious metal myth thrown out the window. Anybody selling you, oh, you, these coins are can't be uh, nationalized or confiscated. Supposedly, that's what happened back in 1933. Although I heard most people didn't turn in their gold. They didn't listen to the government. The government's fucked. The government's ridiculous. They just melted it down and said, oh, it's jewelry. It's not, it's not money, it's jewelry. <laughs> 
Anyway, um, lots going on. Clearly, Silver Eagles it looks like they're gonna do twenty four, twenty five million this year, um, and nobody's trying to do any more. It's just it's so insane. It's crazy. Very interesting. Finally, after two years, <laughs> Evergrande investors warn of uncontrollable collapse. First of all, anybody to have money in Evergrande at this point in time, unless you live in China and you know own one of their houses, which you're going to get for free when it collapses, who in their right mind would invest in Evergrande's debt? Anyway, they're going to all get zero. Finally, it's being uh, admitted. China's Evergrande 11th hour cancellation of a restructuring affecting more than 19 billion of its international bonds could lead to a messy collapse after and have a catastrophic effect on other troubled companies in the sector. Bond, its bond investors said Monday. The Chinese property giant abandoned a bond restructuring deal late last month after spending almost two years in discussions with its investors. What did I tell you all along? If you're a foreigner, they don't give a shit. They want to destroy the economic system. Um, the total amount of debt, I think it's uh, 300 and something billion, 332 billion. Um, Evergrande had the equivalent of more than 332 billion in liabilities by June. 332 billion. That's kind of big. Remember to bail out the uh, financial system in 2008, it was like 700 billion. This is half of that in one company. <laughs> And not only is it that company, China's pulling all the plugs. China's country garden wilts. The largest private Chinese developer is still uh, is still standing. Still standing is likely to be on its knees soon. That in itself won't be enough to spark a broader Chinese. That in itself would be enough to spark a broader Chinese debt crisis. It could certainly undermine Beijing's halting attempts to put a floor under the housing market. Mounting damage to the bank's balance sheets from the property meltdown could also be destabilizing for other parts of the economy. Um, let's see. We're saying uh, da, 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 da. they're missing 470 Hong Kong dollars, uh, 60 million uh, in a, a debt payment. They're not paying it. Uh, da, da, what is the total? Look at that real estate sector. It's just going down to zero. You remember, China was buying, building ghost cities. Look it up on the internet. China's ghost cities. They built these massive cities, and nobody was in them. They, they had an exact replica of Paris. The whole idea was when the financial system blows, everybody was going to come into and live out, from, you know, the, out of poverty into the cities and move into these amazing places. And it was a great idea, except it, they were built like shit, by the way, and they're all falling apart now. <laughs> And yes, anybody invested in um, Chinese bonds, good luck. Uh, let's see. Total Chinese property developers had the equivalent of $726 billion of, of domestic bank loans. <laughs> That's just crazy. Yep. Everything's falling apart. And a lot, I, I posted a... Um, a link to this movie, The Warning. The front line is The Warning. This is back in 2009. Um, really interesting how they're, how uh, derivatives got, kind of really blew up and got started. Um, and how uh, Robert Rubin, Greenspan, and Larry Summers tried to block uh, Sheila Bear and uh, what was the other woman's name? Uh, it was Sheila Bear and... Uh, Brooksley Bourne, I think. Yeah, Brooksley Bourne. Sheila Bear was the head of the um, FDIC, and Brooksley Bourne was the head of the CFTC. That She was pretty much the only CFTC head who was looking out for the people. And, oh, my God, they, a huge battle broke out about whether or not derivatives should be regulated. Uh, Greenspan led the charge on that because he knew if you did not regulate those derivatives, they would grow into the monster that they are now and, and would ultimately destroy everything. And that was his plan. You know, build everything and then just pull the plug, go back to a gold standard. So we're getting near the end of that. So I just, I, I put it up on uh, the YouTube channel, the, the uh, I think it's a trailer for it. 
Go check it out if you haven't seen it yet. It's called The Warning. Uh, it's on PBS, pbs.org, Frontline Documentary, The Warning. Um, but we're going to see a lot more of this stuff because, and the reason all this came up is Sheila Bearer is out there talking today and saying, uh, we're looking at the exact same thing as we did in 2008. Housing Mario looks like a bubble. Sheila Bear, who had a front row seat to the subprime mortgage meltdown, is worried today's housing market is unsustainably hot. <laughs> when these people come out and start screaming, oh, look out, it's going to blow. It's going to blow, by the way. And then banks fail. It's okay, says former FDIC chairman Sheila Bear. Really, it's okay. So if, if Silicon Valley Bank went down and the FDIC did not, did not cover the uninsured depositors, <coughs> what would have happened? It's not okay that banks fail. If you don't cover any of that, if you're going to start giving haircuts, every single human on the planet will run into their bank and take their money out, and banks are fractionally reserved. Every single bank would fail. <coughs> That's where we're getting. We are so close. Um, and it's interesting that they're coming out now, the ex-head of the FDIC coming out and saying, well, let the banks fail because they want to destroy the system. Crazy, I know. Um, this really disturbing. Biden says he's seen confirmed pictures of the beheading of children and things like that. It infuriates me that they're pushing us into war. Everybody should look at these media people and say, who the f are you to push us into a war that they want us to get into? 99% of what you see on the TV is fake. Their analysis is fake. They are, the, each presentation of each side's position is fake. The whole thing is done on purpose, and we got to fall for it. We got to fund it with our taxes. Bullshit. So when people lie, now he's backing up and saying, oh, he literally, <laughs> he said he's seen pictures. It's the worst thing he's ever seen. And then they said, no, 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 he hasn't seen pictures. What? That's a blatant, flat-out lie. There's weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. When have we heard that before? How many people had to die? And then after it's like, oh, no, there wasn't. Don't fall for it. Resist, resist, resist. No more funding for government. Hopefully, I haven't heard what the vote yet is like for speakership. Hopefully, we don't have a speaker so that the government can't issue any of our money anymore. No more government money. Who knows what they do with it, and it's not good for humanity. That's my take. I'm going to talk a lot more about that in tomorrow's um, private road discussion. On the private road, I talk about all this stuff I can't talk about on YouTube. So go check it out. Go to roadtoreal.com. You can click on subscribe today. And for a one year membership, we send out, as a token of our appreciation, a Vertasium token loaded on a paper wallet. Just stick it in your in your vault with your silver and wait for the world to end. <laughs> this is Bix. I'll talk to you later. Mm -hmm.